Hi everyone and welcome to this, my video on scheduling problems. Yes, the man in the shirt. Why is this shirt getting so much conversation online? I don't know. I do own more. I just think it's rather funky. And no, I do not wear a Hulu skirt under here. That would be terribly uncomfortable. Right, my name's Darren from Mathsguru. Thank you very much for watching this video on scheduling problems. I may have already have said that. I'm getting old. I'm beginning to repeat myself. Part of the VCE general maths course, but really massive all over the world. So hopefully you're going to enjoy it. What are we going to work with? Our learning objectives I've given below. There are a lot of learning objectives there, so I'm not going to read them. Please pause the video if you need to. And just know that everything I'm about to write on, you can down... Where's my arm gone? Oh my God, my arm's gone missing. Anyway, everything that I am going to write, you can download from mathsguru.com. Yes, downloadable notes, VCAR exam, work solutions for all their past papers. What else have I got on there? Oh, the videos. So much fun and all mapped against Cambridge, but if you're following other textbooks, they are there as well. Hopefully you find it useful. Radio recap of past learning. Well, this is almost the end of the course, believe it or not. There's this and there's a lesson on crashing. And crashing is amazing. It's an algorithm. This whole thing seems to be algorithm. This whole section seems to be algorithms. But it's based on real world stuff. You learn the algorithms, you're going to smash this. Now, sadly, a lot of people in the VCAR exams find these really, really hard. And I know that sort of the scheduling problems and the crashing problems are about six marks on paper two and generally one or two marks on paper one. That's eight marks. That is a lot of marks to just not bother doing. All right. So my advice is focus on this. If you've got a sack coming up, <laughs> there is so much of this stuff that will end up in a sack. I can almost guarantee it, right? Because there's not a lot of content in the networks course to actually be able to examine. So you can do Dijkstra's algorithm and Hungarian algorithm and crashing and activity networks and dummies and all these type of things. So basically, if you've got no idea what I'm talking about, go back, watch the stuff on Maths Guru. It is there for you. Right, precedence tables. Yes, in a previous video, we looked at precedence tables and uh, and it's not precedence. I don't know why people would say that. It's precedence. Yes, and we had an idea that we could draw diagrams based on these tables here, that we have certain number of activities that we are trying to complete and what has to be completed before the activity can start. So C can only start when A is finished. And if you think of a real world application there, I can only pour the hot water into my cup to make a cup of coffee when the water is boiled. I mean, obviously I could pour it in cold, but it would be disgusting because the coffee granules wouldn't actually, you know, dissolve and then have to throw them away and it all gets very complicated or I could bang it in the microwave. And anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm just talking rubbish. But the point of it is being able to turn these <coughs> into this is massively important, but but then what do you do with it? You know, I mean, what is the point of even drawing these diagrams? Well, believe it or not, the point is gonna come in a moment because have you subscribed to my YouTube channel? No, why? All right, again, very needy, but if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, it means the world to me. Uh, one little click from you just tells me that someone out there has watched these videos. I know it's a lot of effort to fire up YouTube and search for maths guru, you know, bearing in mind I can't spell, and then click that little subscribe button. But I tell you, one night I got 12 subscribers, one night, 12, it was my all time record. The world literally went crazy. Yeah, well, I went crazy um, because it actually gives me value for doing these videos. I talked myself otherwise, but right. So back to the actual question, why, oh, why, oh, why do we do this? Well, we want to know how long it's going to take to complete a project. And that's coming up in terms of a minimum completion times. Now, that being said, we can turn a precedence table into an activity network. All right. So the way we do this is um, a network has weights and we're now going to start giving our activities times. So now not only do we know that activity D can only start when activity B is finished, we know that activity D is going to last for two days. All right. So again, this could be a building site that people are coming in to finish off a house, for example, to wire it up, to clean it, to do last minute inspections, all these type of things. And being able to now interpret these diagrams becomes massively important. So what we're saying here is that A is going to come off the start and B is going to come off the start. And we know that because of those two little lines there. But that A now is going to take eight days and B is going to take six days. We know that C is going to take one day. D is going to take two days. What on earth is this dummy stuff? Do you remember what the dummy was all about? Yep. Well, that tells us that F 
can only start when C and D are finished. That's really, really important. And I've seen VCAR exams put dummies in left, right, and center because it's the way to trick you. You know, at the end of the day, VCAR are here to sadly try and trick you. They're trying to stop all those methods kids out there from getting the 50s and actually give everyone a chance. Practice really does make perfect. And then obviously we've got G as two and H as one, and then we've got finish. Now a minute ago, I talked about the idea that we're trying to find the minimum time to complete this, yes? And a lot of people turn around and say, well, okay, it's just eight plus six plus one plus two plus three plus one plus two plus one. Yes, or we can just take all of those values together and add them together. No. Because what we know is that some of these are actually happening in parallel. So the A and the C and the E are happening at the same time, we think, as the B, the D, and the F, all right? And then, of course, G can only start when they are finished, but how do we know? Well, we could list all the paths through this, so we could say, well, we can go A to C to E to G to H, and if I do all of that, I've got oh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if we were just to go A to C to E to G to H, then we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That path through there is 15 days. But that's not the only path through the network, is it? No. We've got A to C, down the dummy, F, a G to H. So we've got 8, 9, 0, <coughs> still 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. <coughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what's going wrong with my voice. Oh, hold on a moment. If I go that way, I can complete my project in 13 weeks. Yeah. No, not yay. Not really. Not yet. Hold on. I've got this way I can go through B to D to F to G to H. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hold on a moment. So there are tw three different times that I can finish my project, aren't there? Well, yes, there are. And absolutely, if I do B to D to F to G to H, I can finish it in 12 weeks. But it doesn't matter because this route through my, my uh, diagram here is actually the one that's gonna define the length of my project. That's the one that takes the longest time. And as we'll find out in a moment, we'll start thinking of stuff called critical paths. Now, I know that's like confusing stuff. Don't give up yet. Let's go back. I'm gonna show you a way in which you can do this that seems a bit more mathematical. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you something called earliest start times and latest start times, and it's called scanning. Now, when we scan, we scan through the diagram in two ways. We go forward scanning and we do backward scanning. Now, what I'm going to say to you is this, and this is really important for your summary books, right? When you forward scan, you are finding your earliest start times. And when you do that, I'm just going to write the number of the word, sorry, biggest. When you go backwards through the diagram, you're finding your latest start time. And that there, I'm going to write underneath at a moment, is the smallest. Now that makes sense in just a moment. Now, for those of you following the Cambridge textbooks, I am going to diverge quite massively from what they do. I don't like doing it on the vertices. Uh, in previous years when I've done it on the vertices, I can guarantee you I never get float times. All right, and I've checked and checked and checked again. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is do it on the edges. And I, I make no apology now, guys, this is quite challenging. You might have to watch this video over and over and over again to try and do it. And practice really will make perfect. Uh, perfect. Sometimes, I will have to do one diagram three times, right? Because I'll make a stupid mistake somewhere. But the more I'm doing it, the more I'm like, oh yeah, I'm seeing the tricks. I'm seeing where I normally trip over. If you want to do well in the VCAR exam, I guarantee that you have got to master this stuff over and over and over again. So what I'm actually going to do, and this is different from the Cambridge book, is I am going to put the boxes on the edges, not the vertices, okay? So everywhere I see a letter, you will notice above it, I'm putting this box. And that box is split into two sections. And I always have one at the end, and that there is gonna be my minimum completion time. Now, the reason there's two boxes is the first one stands for what I've called my earliest start time. All right, and the second box here will stand for my latest start time. Now, when we go through the diagram from left to right, we're always filling in the first box. Now, again, I'm going to say to you, this is going to seem like complete voodoo the first few times I do this. But again, you go back, you watch it, you listen and you listen and you listen and you'll get it. And you follow my examples through this. And I can't see how they put a question in the sack that will trip you up, all right? Trust me. And it's really important for crashing later on. Right, so we're going to start here. So at the start there, 
my A and my B, my earliest start time is the beginning of the project, right? So my A and my B are going to start on day zero. So they both become zeros. And the rule of thumb for later on is anything that diverges off will always have the earliest start time of the project before, I think. Mm, let me think about that one. I don't think I explained it very well. So A and B both are going to start at zero. Now A is going to take eight days to complete. So C, who starts after A, is going to have to start on day eight. Now the way I did that was I took that zero and I added it to the eight. So that's now going to give me an eight. All right, happy with that so far? Cool. Now I'm going to go the other way. B started at zero. It's going to take six days to complete. So D can only start on day six. Are you happy with that? D can't start until B is finished. B is going to take six, so that zero plus the six gives me the six there. Okay, now I'm going to look at this point here, and I have a bit of a problem because I have a choice to make. There are two edges coming into that point, and I've got to make a choice as to which one I'm going to use. Now, by that I mean, we now know <coughs> that we are starting C in week eight. So to get to here, it's gonna be eight plus one, which gives me nine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a little nine there. Now the reason I'm gonna write a nine there is because, and let's put in, I don't normally put one in on the dummy, but let's put one in on the dummy. So we now know that because we've got two things coming off there, both E and the dummy have to start in week nine. Right, so they are now going to start in week nine. I'm going to put a nine in there and a nine in there. The reason being is that A takes eight, C takes one. So E can only start when those are finished, and that's week eight. And likewise, the dummy can only start. Now, the dummy has no length of time, does it? So I now know that to get to here after the dummy, I've got my earliest start time of nine, Plus the zero gives me nine. And I'm just going to again write a little nine in there. You'll see why in just a moment. So what I'm saying is to go A to C and down to here is going to take nine weeks. But B to D is going to take how many weeks? Ah, well, it's going to take eight. Why is it going to take eight? Because I'm going to do the six plus the two gives me an eight. So I'm going to put an eight there as well. Now, when you go through the diagram from left to right, you are always choosing the biggest number when you have a choice. What's my biggest number? It's nine. Marvelous. So what we now know is that F is going to start in week nine as well. All right. So what does that now give me? Well, I'm now at this nodule here and this one here. So I've got to go along here and along here. Hold on a moment. I've got G again. I've got a choice. So before I do what I'm going to do here, before I know what's going to go in this box here, I've got to work out when E and F will effectively finish. So again, E is starting in week nine. It's got three weeks. So it's going to get there in 12 weeks. So by the time I finish E, it's going to take 12 weeks. <clears throat> but what about F? Well, F is starting in week nine. It's taking one week to get there. So F will finish in week 10. So G can either start in week 12 or in week 10. Which one are we going to choose? Well, again, if I'm going that way, I've got to choose the biggest number. So G is now going to start in 12. And again, now this makes life a little bit easier because G is the only activity going into H. So G starts at 12, takes two weeks to do, means H has got to start in 14. And I, so, uh, sorry, H starts in 14 takes one week to do, so the project will finish in 15. Now that is what we call forward scanning. Yay! Now we've got to do it backwards. Backwards always tricks people, and I'm not making any excuses for this. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being, but I'd rather you guys be able to do this and replicate it than make it, uh, than get sort of uh, lose marks as a result. Right, now, 